Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus this morning, full of the Holy Spirit and with your mind upon the things of heaven. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of Hebrews, and today our text is going to be found in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, which begins with these words, follow peace with all men. Now, let's just pause right there for a moment, because before we pound the desk and say amen, is that true of us? I would have to admit, friends, for me, that has been a very trying passage of Scripture. Because as much as I try to be at peace with all men, sometimes someone comes across our path, and no matter how hard we try, it is absolutely impossible, it seems, to get along with that person. It's almost as if they know exactly how to push our buttons, and they seek every opportunity to do so. And maybe that's why the Holy Spirit through Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. If it be possible, meaning that sometimes you're not going to get along with everyone you meet. But the beauty of what God is trying to reveal to us in this passage is even though we may not get along with them, we are still to look past their faults, past their issues, and love them. And to be quite honest with you, if we're going to be true to the teaching of Jesus, we're going to love, show kindness and goodness to that person more than any other person we know. And even though those acts of love at first may be very difficult to do, as we open our hearts and show love and affection to that person, what might seem to be pretentious at the beginning, over time will become heartfelt, and you will truly find yourself loving this person even beyond their faults. And so whatever it is that they do unto you that causes you such discomfort, simply reach out and love them. Give them a hug. Even in the moment of the confrontation, give them a hug. Look them in the eye. Tell them that you love them, that you care about them. And no matter what they do to try to irritate you, you're going to love them even more. Oh, friends, I wish I would have practiced that advice. I wish I would have known it. I would have been aware of it. My eyes would have been open to it on so many past relationships that I've had where instead I lowered myself to that person's position and I became defensive and I attacked them. But even now, as I think of those moments, if I had done what I just encouraged you to do, how much different that relationship would have been, how much more rewarding that relationship would have been. For all I know, we may still be in contact today if I would have only exercised love. And that's what the next verse tells us. It says, follow peace with all men, but look at verse 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. And I would have to admit, I failed in the grace of God because the person didn't see God in me. They saw me in me, my reactions to their attacks. And yet my duty as a follower of the Lord Jesus was to show them the grace of God. And so even though I can't go back and change those moments, I can certainly look for the ones that arise in the future, and I can do exactly what I've just encouraged you to do. For we all are students of the Word of God, and we're all learning on a daily basis. So just because I bring these passages to you each morning doesn't mean that I have attained them, friends. I am reaching out, I am conforming myself, I am crucifying my flesh each and every day just as I encourage you to do. And as I pray for you each day to conquer these battles in your life, please pray for me in my life that I will be a conqueror of these battles as well. Well, let's look back at our test. Follow peace with all men. James chapter 3 
verse 13 says, who is a wise man? Do you want to be a wise man? Do you want to be a wise woman? Do I want to be a wise man? Well, certainly I want to be as much like the Lord Jesus whom I serve, the hero of my faith as I possibly can. And I'm sure you do as well. Well, he tells us here, who is a wise man? And who is endued with knowledge among you? This person, let him show out of a good conversation or good behavior, his works with meekness and wisdom, not with defensiveness, not with attacks against the other person, but with meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, strife in your hearts, disagreements with one another, arguments with one another, if you have built walls against one another because of your differences, because of misunderstandings, do not glory in these things and do not lie against the truth because this wisdom does not descend from heaven above, but it is earthly, it is sensual, it is devilish, it's evil. For where envying and strife is, where arguments are, where debates lie, there is confusion in every evil work. The wisdom that is from above is pure. It's peaceable. You're not going to find a lot of peace in a, in a debate, friends, in a heated argument. But the wisdom that comes from God is peaceable. It's gentle. It's easy to be entreated or to be listened to, to be obeyed. It's full of mercy, considering the other person's feelings, and it's full of good fruits. It's without partiality, and it's without hypocrisy. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee youthful lusts or childlike desires, the desire to be debateful, the desire to be argumentative, the desire to always try to prove your point, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they gender strifes, they gender debate, they bring about disagreements and disunity. And so avoid these things because the servant of the Lord Jesus must not strive. He must be gentle unto all men, Notice that word all, all men, sinners and saints alike. That includes Mormons, that includes ISIS, that includes Jehovah Witnesses, that includes the people that you disagree with in your local fellowship. Be gentle unto all men. Be willing to teach. Be patient. Be meek, instructing those that oppose themselves. And so back to our text in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness. Now, holiness comes from the Hebrew word that means to be separated. In the Greek, it means to be purified. But how are you to purify yourself unless you separate yourself? So whether the Hebrew or the Greek, it means the same thing. Without striving for peace with all men and without separation unto this world, no man shall see the Lord. Therefore, in verse 15, inspect your life very closely. Beware. Look diligently into your heart, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up within you thereby many are defiled. This is talking about the division that springs up in our hearts and causes animosity and broken relationships between us and other people. And so we go back to what he said, follow peace with all men, get along with everyone. And you will do this if you look past your own desires, past your own pride. Because the only thing that keeps us from reaching out with a hug, loving the person that we cannot get along with the most, the only thing that causes that is we're so eager to prove ourselves right, to prove ourselves the better person, to prove ourselves the better follower of the Lord Jesus. But as Jesus said, if you're going to prove yourself the better follower, then wash the feet of your enemies. That person that may be going through your mind that you find that very difficult time to get along with, to agree with, 
to enjoy their company. Could you wash their feet? Could you wash the feet of a Satan worshiper? Could you wash the feet of a member of ISIS? Well, remember, Jesus said, love your enemies and love is serving them. And that's what we are being called to do here. And so we, know, we need to examine our hearts to be very careful that there is no division in our hearts against someone else, that the root of bitterness hasn't made its way into our hearts. Because if it has, as the verse ends, we will be defiled. Now, friends, I realize that this is not always the easiest thing to do, but Jesus never promised us that it would be easy. He only promised it's possible if we look past our pride, if we humble ourselves. And that's what it means to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus. So my prayer today is whomever that person may be in your life, whomever they may have been in your life in the past, that you will seek to do all in your power to make things right, to reach out and love them, and to find new ways to serve them. Well, we're going to end there today, friends, and I trust that the Word of God has spoken to your heart and that you will continue to seek to be a true and faithful follower of the Lord Jesus. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.